Retired University of Illinois professor and unrepentant terrorist Bill Ayers is back and still as unrepentant as ever. Now, he joined my friend Larry Elder on his radio show yesterday for an epic interview, and things got heated, well, to say the least. Just listen to this. What do you think about the fact that I think you're a terrorist? What do you think about I the think fact that wrong. I think you're, you're, I think you're a degenerate? You're, you're a degenerate who oh, ought to well, apologize for what you've done. That's what I that's think. A, that's a, certainly your, your opinion. That's fine. It doesn't affect me one way or the other. But uh, obviously the not. Is, you're, 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 you, live in a, you live in a country that apparently has forgiven you, allowed you to go to University of Illinois and teach uh, and work for the very government that you tried to attack in the 70s. It's that's really that's quite that's remarkable. You it's quite remarkable that you walk wrong. around, your head held high, you try to attack attack a police building, the Pentagon, the Capitol, you're not in jail, you never spent uh, well, any time wait a minute. in jail. Why it's re it's remarkable. Well, you are absolutely have drunk the Kool-Aid and you think anything your government does has to be terrific, but it's I'm not. I'm talking about what your you did, Mr. Uh, Mr. Ayers. Lots of people protested the Vietnam War. Very few people yeah, blew you? up police stations, blew up the Capitol building, right. blew up the Pentagon. I understand, and I never justify it in the book, and I never say that it was terrific, and I, I admit that we cross lines of legality. You never said it was terrific? Wait, wait a minute. Wait, never. Never. Read the how about How about saying, brother, I'm sorry. Brother, I shouldn't have done book. it. I apologize. I was I, wrong. It was immoral. It was unjust. No, I could have killed enough. somebody. I was oh. wrong. How about that, Mr. Ayers? And joining me now, the man who conducted that interview, my friend, <laughs> national uh, syndicated radio talk shows on Talk Radio 790 KBC, and a syndicated columnist, the one and only Larry. I am, uh, Larry, I am, I am <laughs> so jealous. Uh, that, is, that was great radio. Great stuff. But well, how did you get well, it? Well, I, I have no idea why he came on. My producer, uh, Jason Rose, called him and said, uh, would you like to come on uh, Larry Oda's show? And Ayer said, sure. Oh. And when my producer said that, I said, does Ayers know who I am? He says, I don't think he does. I said, does he know what I want to mm -hmm. talk to him about? He says, I don't think he does. I said, trust me, he won't come on. Fifteen minutes before the interview, Sean, uh, Ayers sends uh, him an email and says, what does Elder want to talk about? I said, okay, there it is. I said, tell him I want to talk about his book, Fugitive Days, about his attempt to blow up buildings, the fact that he's unrepentant, and his relationship with Barack Obama, and whether or not he wrote Barack Obama's first book. I said, tell him that, he won't come on. What did he so say he about the first Ayers book? Will, well, we never got to it, Sean. We went to DEF CON 5 right away, and <laughs> you heard tell. the interview. Yeah. We, we never got to it. But anyway, when he told him all that stuff, Ayer said, oh, okay. I mean, wow. he's amazing. He walked, he, 40 years, he's walked around, made a living, tenured professor at a government university. The irony is just so thick, you can cut it with a knife. Uh, uh, he's retired now on a pension and has never said, I'm sorry, never said I was wrong. Absolutely astounding. You know, I, I, I got to give you a lot of credit because I don't think anybody, and this, is, this was so frustrating to me during the campaign, because if you bomb the Pentagon, if you bomb the, mm -hmm. the Capitol, you bomb New York City Police Headquarters, and you're not sorry about it. And of all days he wrote, he wasn't sorry about it, unrepentant, on 9-11, 2001. And as far as I know, Larry, you are the only one to have ever had the opportunity to confront him or the courage to confront him this way. Well, uh, you know that on, on September 11, 2001, he uh, was interviewed by the New York Times front page story. Yep. And he did not do anything differently than those 19 terrorists did on that fateful day, Sean, uh, by taking planes uh, and running them into government buildings and crashing that one in Pennsylvania. What was the difference fundamentally? They had a, they had a beef with American foreign policy. They acted, uh, they resorted to terrorism. He had a beef with the Vietnam War, and he resorted to terrorism. There was no difference between what he did and what those hijackers did on that day. Well, and this, this goes to the heart of our media. You know, when Barack Obama was asked one time during the campaign, once, this is a guy, he right. started his, his political career in Bill Ayer's house, the unrepentant terrorist. Uh, right. He sat on boards with him, gave speeches with him, and when asked, the one time his answer was, well, he's a guy in the neighborhood. Now, let me play the, uh, the segment where you talk about the Vietnam War and him trying to explain away why he planted bombs in America. A majority of Americans opposed it by 1968. Prof prof professor, professor a majority of Americans uh, opposed it. At one point, you are right. Uh, very few of them, however, tried to bomb a New York City police headquarters oh, or, or, right. or tried to bomb the Capitol building or tried oh, to bomb the Pentagon. Right. Now, oh, let's, let's, right. let's, let's, let's just take it from the top then. Do you regret setting those bombs? Not at all. And the reason you don't. is no one was hurt, no one was killed, property was destroyed. Meanwhile, every week that the war went on, 6,000 people were killed. Now, let me ask you this. If your government enters an illegal, immoral, unjust war and is killing 6,000 people a week, how do you stop it? 
what would you do? I wouldn't you blow up. I, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't blow up buildings. Now they came within seconds in one of those bombs in the capital of killing young people and a family. So uh, and and they also there were part of the Weather Underground members building bombs were killed. Uh, what does this tell you about Barack Obama? What does this tell you about the media, Larry? Well, it, it says a lot about uh, Barack Obama. It says a lot about the media. It says a lot about Bill, Bill Ayers. This was a legitimate campaign issue. Uh, and frankly, Sean, we ought to also direct a little bit of our ire toward John McCain. He r virtually refused to deal with this as an issue. When it f was finally uh, coming from his mouth, he said something like, I don't care about, a, about an old washed up terrorist or something like that, as opposed to making it a legitimate issue. And the larger issue is what you and Donald Trump were talking about earlier in your show, Sean, and that is the past that the Barack Obama has gotten. And not just that stuff, but he said uh, Obama did. He gave tax cuts to 95 percent of American people. Well, 30 percent don't pay any taxes at all. How do you give somebody like that a tax cut? Yeah. And the stimulus bill, he said he was going to uh, save or create 3.5 million jobs. He certainly hasn't. Hasn't been called on the carpet for it. He is still is giving, uh, been getting a pass by the mainstream media. You know, I, I got to tell you, when, when I was doing all the airs and, and Reverend Wright and, and Resco stuff, I can't tell you how many people that said, Hannity, you, you're going over the top, and then only later said, well, it turned out you might have been right on all this. Let me let me play one more cut, um, and and this is this is a really important interview, Larry, that you did here um, for a lot of reasons because he's still unrepentant. This I still right. want these questions answered. I want to know if he was friends with Louis Farrakhan, considering Malik right. Zulu Shabazz recently said that when you sat at his table, nobody, Mrs. Mm -hmm. Farrakhan and Mrs. Obama are on the front page of a magazine together. Nobody's ever asked him that right. question. Let's play uh, him, right. him trying to claim that John McCain, who spent five years in a POW camp, is a war criminal. <laughs> the Weather Underground indeed did take responsibility for a handful, maybe a dozen, you know, extreme acts of vandalism. That's true. That's true. And so compared to what was going on every day in Vietnam, including the illegal bombing of cities, which John McCain took part in, and he is, of course, a war criminal, as is everyone, as, as several people admitted when they came back, including the Vietnam Vets Against the War, war crimes were not a matter of choice. They were a matter of policy. Bombing vast stretches of uh, countryside because you had extra ordinance. That's what John McCain did. So he actually killed people. I actually didn't kill people. Who's the, who's the one who should account for themselves? Unreal. He is a terrorist. He's unrepentant yes. in his terrorism. You got that right. out of him in this interview. He's, he's Barack Obama's friend. Barack Obama gave yeah. speeches with him, sat on boards with him. Barack Obama starts his political campaign in this man's house. Nobody right. cares. And notice Nobody, how, we're nuts. And notice how Ayer, Ayers referred to it as vandalism. You know, like he was a graffiti <laughs> artist, like he was a gangbanger just marking turf. Vandalism? Wow. Well, Incredible. Well, what do you, when you put Ayers, Wright, Resco together, this is why, if people, if people have asked, why do you think Donald Trump's doing so well in the polls? You know why I think he's doing well in the polls? Because he's, he's fighting. He's talking about things that we're told we can't talk about. I'd say that's why he's doing so well. People are saying, amen. Somebody's saying it. Yeah. Well, but look, the, the, the birther thing, uh, I think Donald Trump has raised some very interesting questions. The people that believe Obama wasn't born here are not going to vote for him anyway. The larger question again, Sean, I come back to it, is the past that Barack Obama has gotten. Uh, he has gotten uh, better publicity, uh, fewer uh, hard questions, more softball questions than yep. any presidential candidate I have ever seen. And if the media has anything to do about it, uh, they will, they will reelect him. I remember when Chris Matthews says, as a journalist, forget about whether or not he's a journalist, as a journalist, it's my job to make sure he succeeds. That's how they feel. Yeah, well, the thrill up his leg the whole time. You know, look, yeah. it, it's, I, I think probably he was born in the United States. I believe he was. But the idea, just produce the stupid thing and let's move on. I, I find the whole yeah. way they've handled it odd. Uh, all right, Larry Elder, okay. great stuff. Say Honestly, this is an important interview. Thank Appreciate you, you uh, taking you time see, to share with us. You can hear the, whole interview on, hear the whole interview on LarryElder.com. You got it. And uh, by the way, I recommend everyone go there and listen to it. And uh, Larry, we'll talk on radio next week. Thank you.